Hey everyone. So it's mid-August and there should be some interesting flowers around, so let's just go see what's out there. So over by this uh, red-stemmed dogwood here, we've got a few bizarre things. They're not really bizarre, but uh, you know, we got some of this sedge, nut sedge, with its big clustered flower here. Uh, this is mostly all orange jewelweed through here, so we can see the flower of the jewelweed beautifully on display. Orange jewelweed all through here. And below we have a little bit of lady's thumb. There it is. Member of the buckwheat family. Got some various purple loose strife here and there scattered throughout. Of course, these long purple flowers on racemes. Big enjoyed by bees and butterflies alike. So here we've got a monarch, and it's enjoying this swamp milkweed over here. Bye -bye. Swamp milkweed has these long, slender uh, leaves rather than the circular um, or more sort of softly oblong leaf of the common milkweed. And it's got the pinkish flowers. And this uh, orange vine running through here is called Cascutta, and it is a hemiparasite, meaning that it actually pulls nutrients from the roots. Uh, rather than using photosynthesis. Got some various bees and butterflies covering this uh, wild mint, which is basically colonizing all throughout here. But obviously these numerous flowers give plenty uh, to enjoy for these uh, various types of bees and wasps and butterflies. All along the edge here, we see a lot of this swamp rose mallow, which is a hibiscus that's native to the region that, like all these plants we've seen so far, really enjoys being close to the water, uh, heavily soaked. Um, just a wetland-loving plant. It does well here. It grows, uh, can appear pink as well as white. So growing all throughout this blackberry bramble is this cool flower. Apios americana, the ground nut, which uh, has these really cool pea-shaped flowers. That's, that's really cool. One of my favorite flowers now in its uh, seeding phase is the striped wintergreen. Uh, which, uh, yeah, it's got these little bulbous seed heads right now. Normally has white downward facing flowers, and then it's got these evergreen leaves that will persist all through winter and really enjoys this oak forest habitat. Here we're seeing the last of the flowers on the sweet pepper bush, which is growing all throughout here. Soon these will give way to peppercorn like seed heads. There's another. Apios growing through there. So these typically have a very fragrant smell associated with the white flower, kind of like a, um, oh, what do they call it? Honeysuckle. A very common sight in the grassy areas of the park is this Canadian hawkweed, which uh, kind of resembles a dandelion with these numerous yellow ray florets, but obviously has a much taller habit and uh, tends to have these sort of spiky uh, leaf margins. Here we have some Joe Pye weed just starting to bloom and come up. Joe Pye weed being another New England native, uh, member of the Aster family, and a bit more of that purple loosestrife. So we have a lot of dense vine action growing through here, and you can actually see the culprit 
uh, here in this tree. So if we'll go look up here, get a little zoom. Yeah, you can see them there. Those are grapes, particularly fox grape. And fox grape is the native grape to the region, uh, but it is incredibly invasive. It takes over areas very quickly due to its rapid growth. And it will often grow high up into trees and take them over as well, producing uh, the purple grapes that we think of as Concord grapes, um, which we also call slip skin grapes because they slide easily from the skin. Maybe I can demonstrate that. Ah, oh, yes. All right, so see here, here's my grape. And see, see how it slips? Slip skin. Uh-huh, it's actually pretty rare that you see one of these things um, in bloom around here, but here it is. I believe uh, this is a type of tick clover. Could be less bedeza, but I'll have to double check to be certain. But those usually grow along just this uh, slope here, so you find them here in the park. And, yeah, they're pretty inconspicuous, but they are pretty cool. Here we have another treasured New England flower. It's the, uh, the button bush, uh, which has already passed its flowering, though these are kind of the floral structures that lie beneath. These will eventually go to seed, but typically as little white thread-like uh, petals kind of protruding out in every direction, but it remains to be a ball-like shape. But again, it's called the button bush, loves to be by the water's edge, it's been a constant figure here in Rhode Island for definitely over a hundred years, prob I mean, obviously way longer, um, but, you know, certainly you could think of a bun bush as a local plant. I mean, I gotta point out a little bit of horseweed as well. I mean, this is a very common plant to see in the area. Most people don't really like it because it has a very weedy habit, pops up almost everywhere, but it's a native aster. Uh, and it looks like a horse's tail, I suppose, which is why they call it horseweed. I mean, geez, look here, look at this horseweed. It's growing several feet tall, along with some of these uh, wild lettuces, which always have such cool leaf margins. Another weedy aster that people don't really care for, which I kind of get, but, you know, look at this leaf. So cool. Here we got some crazy looking spiky burdock and it's sort of a thistly look. This, this flower is the Allegheny monkey flower. And uh, you don't see it much else on the park. It only grows in this little swale right here, which uh, these guys are about to mow all the way through. Um, so I guess it's good I got this shot when I did. So there you have it. Those are the flowers of Pleasure Lake during the month of August.